Hey, today I'm in Lambourne with Nick Bentley, who is a professional jockeys coach. Thanks very much to um, for agreeing to talk to us today, Nick. Now that's a new profession. The BHA introduced jockey coaching and mentoring in 2011. Why do jockeys need coaching now? Um, good question. I believe they've always needed coaching. Um, you look at other sports, they've all got coaches. Um, I certainly needed a coach or I'd have benefited from a coach, uh, crikey, it's a long time ago now, 20 years ago. Um, so I just think it's the BHA doing a fantastic job, setting up a program to, you know, to have coaches to look after jockeys. They're, at the end of the day, they're sports, sports men, sports people. Um, they can be aged from 16 to sort of 21, 22 when they're starting off. So it's definitely always been needed. It's just the racing industry is probably just catching up with the rest of the, the sporting industries. Okay, so is it compulsory or is it something they just choose to do? So I will coach uh, apprentices and conditionals. It actually, the, the fee comes out of their riding fees. It's like a 0.01%. Um, so it's not compulsory, but you'd be daft now as a jockey, doing all the training, all the fitness sort of stuff, getting into a very competitive sport to not have or not reach out for a coach to get to get support. Okay, so what um, do work riders need coaching as well? Well, there is actually, I, I'm not sure if it's out now or it's literally going to be very soon where you can get a certificate now to become a work rider. So, which is a great idea. So if you then go to other jobs or you go abroad, you've got like a diploma, whatever you might want to call it, to say that you've work ridden. And that will be something that will be done by a coach. Um, so, yeah, and I have lots of, uh, you know, staff that haven't got licenses that come to me just to improve the riding because there's a niche market there where obviously a licensed jockey has a coach, but you've got a, a, um, a work rider riding out at home who wants to improve his position, his technique, his, his fitness even. Where does he go? So, yeah, there's a, that's, that's happening, yeah. Okay, so in a nutshell, what do you do? What what is where do you start? In a nutshell, it's going to be very hard to answer. <laughs> um, yeah, numerous things. Um, if I was to sort of break it up into three topics, it would be fitness, which is key. Uh, then you've got your technical kind of ability uh, and mindset. Now, obviously, underneath each of those headings, there's numerous kind of subheadings, subjects. So as an example, technical side of stuff, how to use your whip in your right hand, forehand, backhand, um, technique and pushing correctly, the mindset, you've got, you know, just how to think, you know, I'm a great believer in, I mean, that, that's my passion, the mindset, I'm a great believer in, you know, you get the result on how you think, then you've got fitness, which will come under all sorts of dietary requirements, nutrition, so there's there's many many and obviously just being a mentor overall being a being a dad sometimes i get some kids that they're 16 they've literally just left home um not only do they need kind of advice within the actual sport but maybe just how to live at home you know away from home but they're all you know looking after themselves now i'm assuming well i know asking these questions that you yeah. need to have, you need to know what you're doing to become a, a jockey's coach so what's your background yeah, so my background, uh, I rode, got my license out in, crikey, 89, yeah, in 89, rode for George Moore up in uh, Midlam in North Yorkshire, um, rode for him for eight years, so I had a bit of a short span, um, I had, a, I had a, a good career, I rode my claim out, which was kind of the goal at the time, I probably rode it out too quickly, and probably wasn't ready to lose that claim, and take on the experienced jockeys and not have that seven pound, um, but I, I had a good eight seasons, yeah. Now, um, is there any regrets that you, you, you talk about you working out your claim too quickly? Any, apart from that, any regrets that you have about your career? Regrets? Um, the things you might have done differently, not just Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we could all do better. If I had a coach, I believe that I'd have, I'd have definitely uh, ridden for longer for that support. How to lose weight, I obviously probably lost it the wrong way. You know, not the, not the correct way. Um, I probably would have not ridden as many winners as quickly because, you know, you need that claim looking after. When you lose that claim, you really need to be on a good run, you know. Um, I would have got all that help if I had a coach. What I know now, I would have done differently because of that. 
So numerous things, yeah. But I had a great time. Uh, I only rode, rode for eight seasons, but yeah. And what were your highlights of your career? I didn't ride many good horses. Um, my best horse would have been a very good handicapper, high altitude. Won the Persian War Hurdle at Chepstow, which I think is worth now 30, 35,000. Um, I rode a treble, which was known as a, a proper treble the last three races of the card. So it was obviously like, I think, is it known as a brace? Uh, loads of numerous doubles, uh, 50 to 1 winners, winners on TV. But if I was honest, I probably maybe should have moved yard. No, no disrespect to George Moore, I don't know if he'll watch this. Um, but he just didn't quite have the quality of horses. I maybe should have moved down south when I had a, when I had a good patch of winners. I don't know what season it was. Um, so, yeah. Now you stayed in racing when you gave up, when you turned in being a jockey. You worked for Mark Johnson? Yeah, so I went to Mark Johnston's as a work rider or as a rider outer. Probably was a bit too heavy to actually work ride. Um, yeah, great experience. I was there for, geez, I believe 12, 13 years. So learned a lot there. Yeah. And then won great tricks. And then came down, down south, rode out for Brendan Powell first, then Warren Great Tricks, yep. Any particular memories or things that were good there? Um, just two real good jobs. You know, I'm with Oliver now, uh, Oliver Sherwood. Just, yeah, great horses to ride. Um, obviously, Warren Great Tricks is an up-and-coming um, trainer. He's had numerous winners at Cheltenham already. Uh, same with Oliver. So, yeah, just, just a, a, a great riding out job. And then you became a race reader. Yeah, so I was, a, I was race reading kind of before and during. Um, I think I became a race reader in, crikey, 1999. So I've been doing it, yeah, 19, 20 years. Um, yeah, so that was working at home, uh, basically analysing the races off the TV and writing the, the close-ups, they call them. Yes, yeah, so it would be um, an ex-jockey make that easier to do? Yeah, yeah. We were actually approached by the PA Sports, um, current jockeys and, and ex-jockeys, because obviously the terminology, you know, lead headed, you know, horse hanging, not jumping well. You just need to know that sort of terminology. And how would you say, you obviously come in contact with a lot of young lads starting out now. How is the life for a professional jockey, especially a young professional jockey or a budding professional jockey, better or worse now than it was 20 years ago when you were doing it, 30 years ago? Yeah, there's probably two sides to that. Um, it's probably, well, it's definitely better. We've got more support now. We've got obviously this coaching program that the BHA are running, which is, which is obviously fantastic. But it just seems to be a lot more competitive, which is good, but it's just harder for me. For, you know, when I look back to the, to, the, to the jockeys that I coach now, to kind of when I was riding, uh, why is that? Is there a lot of racing, too much racing maybe, where there's, the, the fields are not very big now? I'm, I'm not too sure. But it's just, I get a lot of jockeys come through my hands. They can really ride. They're, they're, they're very good but it's just hard to get, you know, the, the right amount of rides. Yeah, so what, what's, how is the standard of young people that come to you these days? Yeah, good, good. They go through a, a, a rigorous fitness kind of test. So when they get their license, they can ride. Otherwise, they get, they get found out before. Um, they go through sitting on a simulator, knowing how to use the stick. There'd be a coach there stopping them. I think they've got to do four minutes on a, on a motorized simulator. As soon as they look unbalanced or they can't use their stick correctly, be it the backhand or the forehand, they're stopped. And there's a percentage of the four minutes that goes towards other exercises that they're doing to see if they pass or not. So how, how much do you think you can improve somebody? I know this is, you know, it's hard to generalise, but yeah. from, from when they come to you to when they leave you, how, how, as a percentage, how much can you turn yeah, them into? I don't know about a percentage, telling you a percentage, but I like to think, you're not being big-headed, but... Being a coach is getting the best attributes out of a person, and that can be riding, it can be their confidence, their mindset, their dedication. So there's always there's always good in someone. They, they can they can always do something good out of out of the five or six things that I might cover in in a session. So really, it's giving that jockey that that person that confidence to to go away thinking, yeah, I can do better. You know, so. The answer to that question as a percentage would be very hard, but mm. I believe myself, all the different kind of people I get through, not just licensed jockeys, um, they go away with some sort of improvement because I cover so many things. Now, I know you're there to encourage and to, uh, but it, have you ever had to sort of say to somebody, look, I really don't think this is going to work? I'll be very honest with you, not yet. And I, and I would like to think that would never happen because going back on that last question, there's always something good that can be 
taken out of somebody's abilities, be it be it wrong or right or good or bad. Now, you talked about, you know, you wrote out your claim. Jockeys receive, receive coaching, if I'm right, until they've written out their claim with yeah. you. Now, do you sort of give them advice on how life is going to suddenly get a lot more difficult when they've become a fully fledged professional? Is, is that they sort of prepare? Yeah, you, you've, you've got to make them aware of, you know, they need to do the best they can kind of in the training po- process, I call it, you know, the claiming process, because once they're up against the professionals and they're not claiming, Obviously, an owner or a trainer is going to obviously want, you know, champion, obviously, jockey AP McCoy when he's riding. Who would you rather have, AP McCoy or a guy who's just lost his license and he's obviously not as, as experienced as AP McCoy? So you've got to make them aware of that and make them work harder. But I think it's down to the trainer, the agent even, to maybe look after their rides, their winners, and not do what I did, where at the time I thought, great, first goal achieved is not ride it out too quickly because that claim is so valuable if you look after it. 